Welcome to International Definition. My name is Kenneth Freeland, and I'm going to be your host for today's edition of International Definition. Today on International Definition, we have a very special group of people with us. We have a delegation from the Virginia International University. And we also have the Vice President of Virginia International University and some faculty and students. I would like to open with an introduction of Dr. Bishnu Padel, the Vice President of Virginia International University. Let's give him a round of applause. Dr. Pudell, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Ken. It is most appropriate that you have chosen and we have agreed for international definition, Virginia International University. It is a unique university with a vision of training students from all around the world to live in a global village. And we give them very high intensive training to be able to live in high-tech and information technology companies. And we are very happy to be here, Ken, and I congratulate you for choosing this program. Now I would like to introduce my teammates. First is Hassan Karaburk. Hassan? Thank you, Doctor. My name is Hassan Karaburk. I'm the Director of Admission of Virginia International University. I thank you personally for organizing this uh, international um, uh, program. Thanks. Very good to have you on the show. Thank you. My name is Birkan Nostalji. I am doing an MBA at Virginia International University. Also, I'm working as a student counselor at the university. Thank it's you. It's very good to have you on the show. So before we conduct today's experiment, First, I'm going to give you some background on the nature of international definition. International definition has two meanings. One, it's the name of this program. The television program is called international definition. But international definition is also the name of an academic discipline. And that discipline is used to analyze the manner in which populations are identified. The first law of international definition tells us that every natural ethnic reference, every designation of ethnic identification is based on one or two or three or all four of these four ethnic symbols. And they're listed in alphabetical order. So if you translate this matrix, into another language, the order might change, but it doesn't make any difference. In alphabetical order, those ethnic symbols are ancestry, beliefs, religion, culture, ideology, geographic region, and language. And I'll give you three examples of each one of these. With language, uh, an example of an ethnic reference, a person whose language is Romani would be a gypsy. A person whose language is Arabic would be an Arab. A person whose language is Mandarin would be Chinese. Geographic region, and this is the strongest symbol because this is the symbol that the United Nations is based upon. Every country represents a certain geographic region. Another word for geographic region could be territory, land. You look at the land, you look at the territory that you're situated on, and then you name the people after the land. So for example, a person from the geographic region of China would be Chinese. A person from the geographic region of Mexico would be Mexican. A person from the geographic region of Canada would be a Canadian. And then with religion, if your religion is based on Islam, you're a Muslim. If your religion is based on Christianity, you're a Christian. If your religion is based upon Buddhism, you're a Buddhist. Those are three examples of each one of these. 
But you'll notice there's a fourth symbol. But you'll notice there's another symbol. And this symbol is the one which is the most imprecise. It's the one which is most difficult to define. And that is ancestry. Because ancestries are fluid. They can mix in any proportion. And we'll look at that a little later. But there, there's, no, there's no way you could combine languages in Canada. They have French-speaking Canadians and they have English-speaking Canadians. They either speak French or they speak English. There's no language that you get by combining French and English. Geographic reason, you can't combine territories unless you merge them and make one large territory out of two smaller territories. But, uh, of course, with religions, again, you can't combine religions. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not, typically it's not done. But with ancestry, a man of any ancestry and a woman of any ancestry can produce a child, and the child would have half of his mother's ancestry and half of the father's ancestry. I mean, it's uh, uh, a situation where people can combine ancestries. For example, in North America, you have Cherokee, Apache, Sioux. In uh, South and Central America, you have Aztecs, Incas, Mayas. In um, in Europe, you had uh, Anglo-Saxons, Teutons, Celts. In Africa, you have Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. These are people that you would find. And since Dr. Pudel is from Asia, we want to get you to give us three examples of ancestries in Asia, just to correspond to this ethnic symbol. I would say the Aryans. Okay the Mongols, okay. and the Huns. Excellent. Excellent. So you see, we've worked with all four of the four ethnic symbols which are used to define ethnicity. This is the sum total of your ethnicity. Your ancestry, your religion, the geographic region that you're from, and the language that you speak. And they all have a function. They all serve a purpose. You use your language to communicate. You use your geographic region because you have to have space in order to live. You use your religion in order to relate to the ultimate intelligence. And of course, ancestry, that's the sum total of your inheritance, your genetic inheritance. The, uh, in the horizontal row, we have physical traits. These describe your body. What is your height? And there's a well-established system in place, the metric system. The metric system is now roughly 200 years old. Can you imagine that? If you go back to the time of the French Revolution, they put 